Now, the next thing that I would like to talk about is uh, basically where you would see radicals being used. And one of the most common places where you see a radical uh, or an application for a radical is the Pythagorean theorem. Now, this uh, is basically just talking about what the theorem or the formula is. Now, we are saying if uh, C is the length of the longest side of the right triangle, so as you can see, this is your right triangle, your longest side is always opposite to the right angle itself. Okay, so that will be what we call as the measure C. A and B will be the lengths of the shorter sides of the triangle. And your Pythagorean formula basically says uh, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So the longer side, which is what we call as the hypotenuse, you square that, and that equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So uh, a square plus b square will equal c square. Okay, that's the Pythagorean formula. And as I said, the longer side is called the hypotenuse, and the shorter sides are called legs. So let's go ahead and use this formula to uh, come up with some answers here. Now let's say we have this right triangle and we're trying to find the unknown length of this uh, given triangle. So you can see they're giving us one of the legs which is 5 units. They're giving us the hypotenuse which is the longest side and that is 13 units. The measurement that we're missing is of one of the other legs right here, the B part. Now your Pythagorean formula is C squared equals A squared plus b squared, and again, remember, this is your c and this is your a. So go ahead and substitute your c and your a values, which will be 13 squared, and the a is 5, so that will be 5 squared plus b squared. Okay? Now, since we're trying to find b, basically you need to get rid of the square on the b and move everything else over to the other side, the first thing we'll do is go ahead and square our 13 and 5. 13 square is 169, 5 square is 25, and then of course you have your b square there. We'll go ahead and start by moving 35 over to the other side. So 169 minus 25 will give us uh, 144 and 144 equals b squared. Now you have b squared equals 144 which means that if I need to find my b I need to go ahead and take a square root on both sides so that I can get rid of my square sign. Again remember square root is the inverse of the square so if I want to get rid of the square I have to take a square root. Now normally you would end up with a positive and a negative answer but we are interested only in the principal root. We're not interested in the negative root because this is a length and lengths cannot be negative. So we discard the negative answer. And you will actually end up with b equals square root of 144, which is 12. Okay, And this will be your unknown length here. So you can see how the radical comes into play. You start out with the Pythagorean theorem or the formula, and by the time you get down to finding the unknown, you will have to take a square root on both sides to find what the value of b is. And there you go. Okay, so that is one of the applications that you will see of uh, a radical. Now, the other place where you may come across using a radical or a square root would be the distance formula. And what exactly do we mean by the distance formula? We have a little graph here. You have your, let's say, your x and y axes here. And you have these two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, and we are trying to find what is the distance between these two points. So basically we're saying if you draw a line between these two points, what would be the length of this line and of course that will give you the distance between the two points. So what we are going to do here to come up with our distance formula is take the help of the Pythagorean formula here. 
using these two points we go ahead and make a right triangle okay and these two lines the extensions where they meet will be the point x2 y1 we're calling this distance a and we're calling this distance b now since this length here is across from your right angle this acts as your hypotenuse and um, you know basically we're replacing the uh, letter C with the letter D okay but it's the same thing if you use the Pythagorean formula you will end up with D square equals A square plus B square okay now how do you find the lengths A and B that's really simple if you look at this graph here to find the length of A A is this distance between these two x values right x1 and x2 so if you're trying to find this distance you just subtract x2 uh, x1 from x2 and you will come up with what your distance for a should be now you'll notice I'm putting these in absolute value symbols it's because in case the number is negative since you're talking in terms of distance or length we want it to be positive that's why we're putting the absolute value signs on it for B, this is the distance B right here between these two points. So if you're trying to find what the distance of B is, you go ahead and subtract the value of Y1 from Y2 because, of course, this is a vertical length. So you will subtract the uh, Y values and you will come up with what the distance for B should be. And again, we're putting it back into a Pythagorean formula so that it's a positive number. Now, if I take these values of A and B and substitute that into my Pythagorean formula, so for my A and B, I'll substitute my uh, absolute values here, you will end up with something like this. Okay, so once you substitute them, you will end up with D square equals, for your A, you replace it with X2 minus X1, and your B, you replace it with Y2 minus Y1, and since we are squaring these, we don't need the absolute value symbol. Okay? So all we did was take our Pythagorean formula and substitute in what our distance for A and B is going to be. And now that you're trying to find the distance between the two original points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, you just take a square root, you know, because you want D by itself. You take a square root on both sides of your equation and you end up with this as your distance formula okay so you will need to remember the distance formula when you're trying to work with application problems or you know any example so let's go ahead and look at an example on uh, how to find the distance between two points and you can see this will be our point uh, we can call y1 and call this our point x2 y2 and that will give us um, you know, values to plug into our formula. So let's go ahead and see this our point x1. Distance formula is x2 minus x1, then square the whole thing, plus y2 minus y1 squared. We'll start by substituting our x2, x1, y2, y1 in this formula. So x2 is 5, x1 is negative 1, so make sure you have two negative signs here this negative comes from the formula and this negative comes from the one you'll square that y2 is 3 minus y1 which is 2 so go ahead and square that okay and let's see what do we end up with this will give you 5 minus minus 1 is of course 5 plus 1 which will give you 6 3 minus 2 is 1, and you're still squaring them. And let's see what we end up with. 6 squared is 36. 1 squared is 1. 36 plus 1, of course, will give you 37. Now, go ahead and leave your answers in the radical format. You don't have to evaluate them or anything. Now, if you were able to simplify this, you could, but since 37 is a prime number, you cannot simplify this any further okay so you saw two different applications of where you may be able to use a uh, 
radical, uh, you know, your Pythagorean formula and your distance formula. And this basically takes care of section 10.3 for us.